let's say that I have a plate here, okay? I have a plate. This plate is some piece of steel. It's a, it's a piece of steel. It's a very thick piece of steel. It has a little thickness to it, and I'm going to draw here for you, okay? All right, and underneath this thing, underneath this piece of steel, okay, I am going to try to draw a flame. So I've got a blowtorch under here, right? And this blowtorch is coming up underneath, and obviously it kind of comes up here. It's kind of hidden. It's a very hot blue flame, right? That's why I'm drawing it in blue. So obviously it's pointed right at the center of the slab, okay? And it's very hot, so it's going to get this thing hot. Now let me ask you this. Right after you turn on the flame, okay, is the entire slab, let's say the slab is very large. Let's say the slab is 300 feet long and 300 feet wide. Do you expect the temperature of the slab to be the same? Okay, at all places? Well, no, of course not. The temperature near the, near the center here, where the, where the flame is touching, is going to be very hot, and the temperature is going to trail off and get smaller and smaller. And if this slab was 25,000 miles long, well, the temperature at the very edge is really not going to change at all uh, if you have a little, uh, little torch here in the center, okay? So what am I getting at, you might say? Let's, let's cut to the point here. I'm going to superimpose on top of this thing. I'm going to superimpose my little coordinate axes that I always like to do. Right, so this comes down here, right, like this, like this, okay? So, no different, this is the x value, the coordinate, the uh, y coordinate, and the z coordinate. All I've done is drawn a coordinate system on top of this real life problem. I haven't changed anything, you've still got a piece of metal, you're still heating it up. What I want to do is I want to define a function that's going to tell me the temperature as a uh, all over this piece of metal basically. So I may want to know the temperature here. I may want to know the temperature here. I may want to know the temperature in the center. I may want to know the temperature here. Well, since it's a flat slab of metal with a it has some thickness, but it's not a very thick thickness, then what I really want to do is I want to define a function of x and y. So given any pair of numbers x and y, because this is a flat piece of metal here, okay, laying on the x-y axis, okay, at, at any given value of x and y, I'm going to calculate the uh, temperature, which I'm going to call that temperature, I'm going to define that variable to be z. Okay, so let's go ahead and just sort of, sort of draw that and give you an idea of what that, what that might look like. Let me go ahead and shorten this a little bit to give me some room. This is still y, nothing has changed, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw my coordinate system one more time over here because I don't want to disrupt my original picture here, okay. Okay, so this is x, this is y, and this is z. So what we probably would find, if we actually did this experiment, is what we would find is that in the center, in the very center, let's say the slab is centered right here, the very center is at x comma zero and y comma zero. Right here in the center, the temperature is going to be a maximum, and as we go away from it in any direction along x and y in this plane, the temperature is going to fall off, right? So what we're going to find here is the temperature might look something like this. It's going to be a maximum and then it's going to fall off, like this, okay? Something like this. And let me go ahead and just draw some dotted lines here to make it a little bit more clear what we're doing. Okay, so I hope you can see what I'm getting at here. The temperature, well, let's go ahead and continue mine my guy out like this. Okay, this is y, and you know, negative y would continue on, you know, out like this or something. So it's sitting right there, okay, and it's hard to see in these three-dimensional, you know, pictures, but what I'm trying to show you, okay, what I'm trying to show you is it's a three-dimensional shape. Think about a salad bowl, okay, think about a salad bowl. This is like an upside-down salad bowl sitting on the on the uh, xy plane, okay? Right in the center, at x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero, I have a value here, and let's say this value is three. Three, uh, you know, it could be three degrees, or it could be 300, you know, degrees, or whatever the value of this flame is. I'm just sort of making something up here to give you an example. But it has a maximum, and as you go in negative y and positive y, and as you come out of the board toward you, in the uh, x direction and into the board, the negative x direction, the temperature falls off accordingly, okay? So what you have done is you've constructed a function of two variables, okay? You've constructed a function of two variables. Now, if this were a perfect circle, if this were actually a hemisphere, a circle that, let's just say we did this experiment, I don't know what it looks like, but let's say it did actually produce something that kind of looked like a circle, half circle in three, in three uh, uh, directions, in three dimensions, then what the function would actually be, let's say, 
the function could look something like this. You could say it was f of x and y, okay? And it might look something like uh, 9 minus x squared minus y squared, okay? What I'm saying here is, and I haven't given you any proof, I'm just sort of giving you an example, right? What I'm saying here is you can put a value of x and you can put a value of y in, okay? in this plane, so to speak, and when you put it into a function like this, you'll calculate a value, in this case the value is z, but I'm also saying that z is equal to this function of x and y. z is the value that you calculate, the function, just like when you say f of x, you know that y is equal to f of x, here I'm saying z is equal to this function, okay? So whatever I calculate is going to be the z, the z coordinate to, to, to draw my picture here, okay? Why does it look like this? Just to give you a little background, if this is a circle here, a hemispherical circle, then you know the formula for a circle in three dimensions is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to the radius squared, r squared. The radius is 3, so it's going to be 3 squared. That's going to be 9. And then if you solve for this thing for z, you move x squared and y squared over here, take the square root to give you z, then you'll get this guy, and so that's your third component there. It isn't so important that you understand this specific problem. I'm just trying to give you an idea, an example of how you would actually need, or why you would need, to even know what a function of two variables is. So in this case, you have a flat slab, you stick a flame on it, you're going to get a maximum temperature here and a, and a, and a temperature that's going to fall off here. Okay, as you go anywhere away from the center here. Now it's a flat system. We draw it like this to give us a graphical representation of what's going on. You can see there's a maximum in the center and it falls off in all directions. Okay, uh, and you're trying to draw it on a two-dimensional plane, which is tough to do, but that's the best you can do. In reality, what you're really representing is that any direction from the center is going to have a lower temperature than what's at the center. So, just like up above, when you had a function of one variable and you had a curved, you know, sort of function here. You were very interested to calculate derivatives, which was the slope, okay, the slope at, uh, at any given point, right? At any given point, you just calculate the slope of the tangent line, okay? Well, now we're just making a kind of a generalization here and saying, well, if it's a function of two variables, z is a function of these two variables. The third component here, the third, the third coordinate, is a function of something in the xy plane. In this case, it's something simple. It's a, it's a hemispherical salad bowl, but it could be a crazy thing with hills and valleys or whatever it is, okay? Then we're going to be very interested to calculate the derivatives here. We're going to be very interested. At this point, what is the slope of that function? At this point, what is the slope of the function? What you're basically saying is at this point in the slab, how fast is the temperature changing as I travel you know, away from this point? So at this point, I might want to know what's the derivative, what is the rate of change of the temperature along this slab, okay? Well, you see, in a two-dimensional problem like this, it, it isn't very helpful just to ask that question, what's the rate of change? Because the other thing you have to ask is, well, what is the rate of change of the temperature you have to ask what direction are you talking about. Are we talking about what's the rate of change along the y-axis? Okay. Are we talking about what's the rate of change along the x-axis? Okay. So you have to ask the question, what direction are you talking about? Okay. So I'm building up some rationale for you. I'm trying to give you some background because when you're talking about a partial derivative, which is what we're talking about here, we're trying to find out the rate of change of a of a multivariable function. That's what a partial derivative is. Okay, so that's sort of the definition for you. We'll write it down. Okay, you always have to specify what direction you're talking about. Are you talking about along the x-axis? Are you talking about along the y-axis? You see, back when you learned derivatives uh, the first time, there was no ambiguity because there's only one function. Uh, there's only one function. There's only one variable. So when you ask about the derivative of f of x. It's always with respect to x, f of x, so you take the derivative of f with respect to x. But when you have a, a function of two variables, where the third variable, z, or the third coordinate, is defined as a function of the other two, you must specify what direction you, you care about taking the derivative, okay? Because it is going to be different in general, okay? So this is a symmetrical function. It may not matter so much for this function, but if this function had a lot of hills and valleys and crazy, you know, things, then the derivative along x as you travel along the x direction may be different than the derivative that you travel along y because the hills and the valleys may look a little different if, as you go along x and as you go along y and that's what you're doing you're looking at the hills and valleys as a function of x and y okay so enough talking let me try to write down some bullet points about the partial derivative and uh, then we'll actually just get into some problems but what you're going to find out this is just a bunch of back